Hello, my name is Chrissy and welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you my September 2024 wrap up where I read 16 books. To be fair, a lot of them were very short. The first book is Mr. S's House Guest by Savannah Rain Ulin. This is a very short read. It's under 100 pages and it is a paranormal gothic kind of book. Mr. S, you see, has trouble with ghosts in his house. He doesn't want them there, and so he keeps bringing people to his house to try and get rid of them. This next person that he brings will hopefully get some results. While sure, I do really like how this book invokes emotion within its storytelling, and I like the dark gothic vibes of it. Overall enjoyable, and I liked it. The next book is Turbulence by David Zazale. This is a novella at 160 pages-ish. It's linked stories through flights and characters that meet each other, um, so everyone has some connection to the person before them. And while there are some stories that do connect besides just the characters, for the most part this reads like a handful of short stories with loosely interconnecting parts. The overarching theme between each story is pretty much like love and connection. It's pretty broad and generalized. Some of the short stories are really hard hitting, some not as much. I enjoyed it for the quick read that it was. The next book I read is A Deal with the Devil by Viola Gray, and this is a historical romance novella that was a lot spicier than I thought it was going to be. And I don't think it was trying to hide its spiciness like that cover, like, come on, Chrissy, what are you doing? But at any rate, we follow Miss Evangeline, who was a companion to this lady who ends up, I believe, passing away, and the house goes to an earl who, um, who makes a proposition for her in order for her to stick around, um, and things blossom from there. As stated, there's a lot more explicit scenes than I thought there was going to be. Like, it's the vast majority of the book. Not a problem if that's what you're looking for, but I was kind of hoping for more bonding time between the two main characters outside of bedroom activities, but there is not. So while I do heavily enjoy historical romance, I don't think the really short, smutty historical romance is for me. But if it is for you, then I would heavily give that book a try. It's on Kindle Unlimited. The next book I read is Greedy as a Ghoul by Casey Sutton. This is a novella that's a prequel to Malthus Necromancer Unchained. And I think it's a really good one. It's a nice introduction into the world where you get to meet the main character and see what his powers do, while also not giving you a lot into what's going to be the plot of the book. I do like how Casey Sutton writes, so I will be visiting that necromancy world. The next book is In Mercy Rain by Shannon McGuire. This is also a novella that interconnects with a larger series called The Wayward Children, and if you have not read The Wayward Children series, why not? It's really good. The Wayward Children series is pretty much like what happens to the kids in fairy tales after their fairy tale is done, and some of them want to go back to that fairy tale, even if it wasn't a nice one. In Mercy Rain follows Jack's story. Um, Jack is presented in the first book of the Wayward Children series, and it's really good. It's just... I heavily suggest people go read the series. The next book is Not Your Mountain by A.J. Alexander. So this is a lighthearted fantasy. It's marketed as a humorous fantasy. It follows Maddie, who is a dwarf in the mines, and he just wants to see the world. He wants to have adventures. He doesn't just want to, you know, bust up rocks all day. The humor in this book is very situational based. I think it's more on the lines of like physical humor rather than like narrative sarcastic humor. It's a quick little read. It's pretty fun. I do wish that certain parts of setting and plotline were a little bit more developed, but otherwise, pretty good. The next book I read is The Sitcom Star by Jackie Lau. This is a contemporary romance novella that features a guy named Aiden who ends up running into one of his old classmates who is now a sitcom star. Then meeting again prompts them having a love story. It is also the first book in the Choose Restaurant novella series. It's almost like a cozy romance, like there's not a lot of big tension that happens between the characters, but it is just really cute. It's sweet. I liked it. I heavily enjoyed myself. It is also pretty funny, so I definitely recommend it if you like contemporary romance. The next book I read is actually the second book in the Choose Restaurant novella series called The Reluctant Heartthrob. This follows another actor in the Choose Restaurant sitcom uh, named Ethan, and he and a gal named Robin end up having a one night stand that's not really a one night stand. It was, things happened, okay? This second book is a little less on the sweet side and more on the steamy side. And not to say that it doesn't have its sweet moments, it does. It still is cute in a lot of ways, but there's a lot more explicit scenes in this book than in the first book. <laughs> Also, Robin is an autistic character, so if you're looking for that representation, this may be the book to do so. 
The next book I read is Unhinged by Vera Valentine, and yes, I did in fact read a sentient romance book that features a door as a character. There's a woman named Tana who lives in this apartment complex and her door happens to be sentient and he wants to protect her. The door loves Tana and there is a creepy guy who also like runs the apartment complex and the door is trying to protect Tana from that guy. I read this book for pure curiosity reasons. It was very interesting to read. It's also not as weird as I thought it was going to be. I saw this book popping off on TikTok and people were like talking about how weird it was and like they're like oh my gosh not as weird as I thought it was going to be just not as weird I don't want to give it away because I really think that this is a book if you're curious about it you should experience it for yourself but there's reason to some of the madness that happens in this book so it's not it's not just purely out there there's some explanation the next book I read is Skeleton Song by Shannon McGuire. This is also a novella in the Wayward Children series, and I heavily, heavily think you should read it. This follows another character that is present in, like, I believe the first book of the Wayward Children series named Christopher, and pretty much what happens when he went through his door. His story is a very, very short read. I would heavily suggest reading the series. I can't say that enough. The next book I read is Dying to be Beautiful by M. Glenda Rosin, and this book is a murder mystery where a head is found in the sink of a salon in the Hamptons. This book could be summarized as a murder among rich people. It was okay. I wasn't the biggest fan of how the author divvied up the scenes and what scenes that they decide to focus on. Also, it's not on page, but there is pedophilia that is portrayed in this book, but the way that the author skirts around calling it pedophilia left a little bit of a weird, like, it left a weird feeling. I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it and I'm not sure what the purpose of trying to avoid words like pedophilia or pedophile was for the story, but there's someone who's like trafficking 11 and 12 year olds, like, and even the word trafficking isn't really used. That did bother me quite a bit in this book, so if you have to pick it up, it's not on page necessarily, but they do talk about it. And as said, the way that the story and characters do everything and anything to not say those words was just kind of... Mm, me. The next book I read is Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors by Somali Dev. This is a Pride and Prejudice retelling focusing on an Indian American family, the Rajas, and specifically Krisha, who is a neurosurgeon who has all the awkwardness of Darcy, but the family of Elizabeth Bennet. <laughs> DJ Kane is a chef in this book, and he has all the siblings of Darcy, but all the sass and sassafras of Elizabeth Bennet. Trisha's family hires DJ to do a dinner, and Trisha just keeps putting her foot into mouth when it comes to DJ. So, Prejudices Bloom. I particularly love this retelling of Pride and Prejudice. I thought it was really well done. The misunderstandings that continually happen between Trisha and DJ, which solidify the prejudices that DJ has towards Trisha, were just really well done. I liked it a lot. Also, this has one of the most villainous Wickhams in all the Pride and Prejudice retellings that I have read, and I, ooh, it was really well done. I liked it a lot. Even if you don't like retellings, this book has a lot going for it. I think that you would probably enjoy it. The next book I read is Come Tumbling Down by Shannon McGuire, and this is the fifth book in the Wayward Children series. And this is actually part of the series, not just a novella that's kind of a side piece of it. I'm pretty sure I've been raving and raving and raving about Wayward Children series, but once again, read it. I don't really want to get into too much of what happens in this book because this is definitely one you're gonna have to read the first couple of books in the series to get what's happening here and to really get the fill of story from it. So there's a lot of spoilers if I talk about what happens in this book so I don't want to do that too much. Just note that it has to do with Jack and Jill from the first book. The way that Shannon McGuire just does world building and character development is chef's kiss. And that goes along with the next book because Across the Greengrass Fields by Shirley McGuire is book number six. This, however, can be read as a standalone. This is not necessarily tied with the other books as far as main plotline. We follow Reagan who finds a door that leads to a world with unicorns and centaurs and a lot of dangerous things, let's just say. In this world, Reagan is really trying not to have to follow through with a quest that a lot of people have to follow when they go through these doors. So she's like, quest? No, thank you. Also, one of the reasons why I love the Wayward Children series is because they have some amazing art and 
all the doors have the words be sure on top of them. So I love how this is portrayed with Reagan's door. For as long as Shane McGuire is going to be pumping these books out is how long I'll be reading them. I want to read them all. I think I have a few more books to go before I'm fully caught up. I'm gonna get there. The next book I read is The Truth According to Ember by Danica Nava. This is a contemporary romance between two indigenous characters written by an indigenous person. Ember, our main character, fudges her resume because she's really just trying to find a job, a good paying job with benefits. And how she fudges her resume is one, a little bit of her qualifications, and two, she decides not to disclose that she is indigenous. She ends up getting hired at a tech company and ends up meeting a handsome man in IT. And the lies just keep piling up after that. I have a full review that I'll link in this video, but just know I like this book a lot. I thought it was really funny. I thought it was really sweet. I have a full review that I will link to um, if you want to go view that, but just know I like this book overall. I thought it was funny. I thought it was sweet. And I really liked how it portrays racism and sexism in the workplace and just out in the world. Also, I love a messy, messy, keeps making mistakes main character. The last book I read is Witchlings by Clarabelle A. Ortega. This is a middle grade book that's kind of like a magical school type setting. Seven is old enough to now be put in a coven and she goes to the ceremony and she really wants to get into a very specific coven, but she is not placed there. She is instead placed with the spares and the spares are not treated well in the town. So Seven really doesn't want that to happen. Also with the spares is if they are not able to like form a bond quick, then they may not be fully witches by the end of their term as a coven, or they might not even be witches at all. They might just say either witchlings are non-magical, and Seven does not want that. So she invokes the impossible task, and her coven then has to uh, defeat a night beast, which is very difficult. I enjoyed this book a lot. I do want to read further in the series and I kind of hope that as my son ages he'll be interested in this book. I think this book has a wide range of subject matters and also tackles things like prejudice and not treating people well and why that's not a good thing and also goes into a little bit of how that can systemically happen through things like government. That sounds so very adult to say but the way that the author handles it in this book makes a whole lot of sense and I like how she does that explanation in there. Those are the 16 books. A lot of them novella are very very short in length that I read for September. The chances of me hitting 16 books for October is very 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 slim. I'm just gonna get through as many as I can. If you have read any of the books I talked about please let me know what you thought of them or if there's any books that I talked about that you're now interested in please let me know. I'm a little bit proud of myself that this is the second video I filmed in the last two weeks instead of waiting months between so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and watching this video. I hope you have a very good day and as always and forever may get lost in a book.